Hello, thank you very much for inviting me to stand here, present our res uh, result based on the Stopping Antibiotic Resistant Evolution Project. So, this project uh, focuses on uh, evaluate the quality of the treated wet water from wet water treatment plant. And as you know, wet water treatment, treatment plant, they receive the waste water from different sources, including human community, hospital, and pharmaceutical industry. And we all expect that wet water will be treated in wet water treatment plant to eliminate all the contaminants. However, the fact that there, there are not 100% removal rate for all the contaminants, including uh, chemical contaminants and biological contaminants. And here uh, we focus on biological contaminants, including bacteria, uh, uh, antibiotic resistant bacteria, and antibiotic resistant genes. And what happened with them? The remains after the treatment, they remain and they will discharge back to environment. Of course, they will expose the risk to human and animal health because they can come back to the human community through the irrigation in the agriculture as well as in some country they use the treated water and retreat it again for drinking, safe drinking water. So in this uh, project, we have uh, seven different countries in as you can see here in the highlight in this map, and, uh, and also you can see in this map the antibiotic consumption of human community in the first primary care, and uh, Ireland together with Portugal and Spain, we are four in the high group of using antibiotics. And all the partners in the uh, STAIR project follow exactly the same workflow. That means we have the wastewater treatment plant effluent sample and from them we extract DNA to identify the presence of antibiotic resistant genes as well as study the structure of the bacterial community in wet, treated wet water. The other, in the other aspect, we also, start, uh, we also studied the microbial, microbial present based on the indicator bacteria for quality, water quality is uh, they are fecal coliform, E. coli, and enterococcus, and three uh, resistant phenotype were picked as uh, worse uh, amoxicillin, ciprofloxacin, and tetracycline. If you see resistance there in wet water or everywhere, the main question will be how they develop or how they spread. And here, the resistant bacteria can be come from mutation on chromosome, or they can be the genes located on the mobile genetic element like plasmid. In this case, if they on the chromosome, okay, they just go down to their offspring and then eliminate by the nature, by the evolution. But what if they on plasmid, for example? That means they can spread between bacteria something, something by horizontally from one bacteria to the other inside community. It's, it's why we focus here on studying plasmid to see if we see how the, uh, the resistant determinants spread inside within the bacterial community and between the environment bacteria and possibility with the human pathogen. So plasmid were extracted directly from wastewater or from the resistant bacteria that we enumerated from wet water. So this that is the first result based on the enumeration of the bacteria between all the countries. I leave out some countries because they have very clean water, I say, because they couldn't enumerate any of the indicator bacteria, as for example, Poland, so you don't see Poland here. And I just, because it has huge data, so I just put here the, the one, one wet water treatment plant for each country, except for Ireland, I put two wet water treatment plants, okay? And here, you see, we are falling in the middle rate of the, we are not in the high gate country that found the high amount of the bacteria, but we are not also in the list. So we are in very, very middle height. And by on the enumeration of the fecal coliform, we found that the highest phenotype, uh, resistant phenotypes uh, were amoxicillin followed by ciprofloxacin and tetracycline. However, when, try, when we tried to identify enterococci, we found very, very little 
colonies that are so resistant on the selected antibiotics. That I don't know, we don't know yet the reason why, because here when you go in the hospital, you will see the alerts about the uh, vancomycin resistant uh, enterococcus, right? So that means it's in the hospital, uh, in, the, in the community. But after the treatment of, of uh, the wastewater, that one almost eliminated. So, well, beyond the analysis of the resistant genes, we have here the graph of the most prevalent resistant genes we found in wastewater. It's a Q QPCR result. And again, island in the four in the middle runs. So we are not in the very high abundance of all the resistant genes that could identify by the QPCR chip. But however, when we study the genetic recombination element, island is very high in abundance of the intestinal sequence. What, is, what are they? They are the sequence that can be insert inside the chromosome, five, it will be there. But they can also jump back to the plasmid or what, the other uh, mobile element and then they move around. So talking about bacteria, we, we know that there are a community of bacteria, but there are a lot of mixed different species, different phyla. So in order to visualize the structure of bacterial community in the treated wet water, we, we have this, this bar chart and we see like the most prevalent bacteria are proteobacteria, they have here, uh, sorry, and followed by actinobacteria, bacteroidetes, and formicutes. Those bacteria are the most prevalent in treated wet water, but they also found high abundance in human good, animal good, also in soy and uh, surface water. And as I already mentioned before, like wet water treatment plant, they receive wet water from different sources. So these bacteria can be come from any sources that we have, but we say because we have the wastewater treatment plants that we have sampled, they are urban wastewater treatment plants. So high possibility we got that from human community. And if you see like the pattern of bacteria community, they are very consistent during all the sampling time, except for October 2015, when we see like they are there are no any patterns you can see clear here. The bacteria, uh, some phyla, they change very sharply. For example, are uh, very clear with actinobacter. Some, sometimes they have more than 30% of the population, but in the other sampling time, they have less than 10%. We, we found that, but it haven't record or report anywhere in the world of this change in the bacterial, in the microbial general community structure. So we try to find why we have this, this time, why we have this change very sharply between day and day. And we found this period, we have low temperature in compare with autumn, the late autumn of all the, the year, so we think of course, analysts need to be done more to, to confirm, but we think that the change in temperature may contribute to this change. And that, well, when you see that the bacteria community in, in, in the figures, we will see that it is significant, it's different between the bacteria or the, that we see. So statically, we study the uh, principal component analysis, and you see here are the cluster of the bacteria in each sampling time. They are very pretty much gr grouped together with say the close distance. However, in 2015, October 2015, we see they, they are spread. They are spread by the PC1 ox, that means by the most abundant oxys you can find. So that means it, it comes up with the, what we found previously. So that means this chain is significant. <coughs> also, when we talk about whatever release from wastewater treatment plant to environment, well, we do it so because we want to see if that, uh, that bacteria we found will have exposed some risk 
to human health or an environment in general. So we found here, as a genus analysis, we found some bacteria genera that in the red box, for example, Pseudomonas, Bacteria, or, my, or Mycobacterium. When I say them out, you will say, oh, yes, they are, they are potential bacteria. Right? You heard about the disease called by Pseudomonas in hospital, by Mycobacterium tuberculosis, or by Bacteria, right? Or, so, these bacteria genera, they may contain that, uh, that lethal pathogen to, for human or animal in general. But we don't know, yes, if they are really uh, po the definitely say, yes, they are there, they cause the risks. If you, you, for example, you walking in the river or swim in the river, we, don't, we, we cannot say it firmly. Because this genus, as an as a identification, we just that uh, limited genus, so they can be pathogen in there, also composer in there. So, regards to plasma study, it's uh, come to the end of the project, so we don't have a lot of time to go deeply with it, and we hope that we will have the chance to come back to study them more deeply. But in general, we have more than 100 plasmids extracted, and most of them, the concerning is most of them, so multi drug resistant phenotype, that means they're resistant to at least three different classes of <laughs> antibiotics. And when we pick out 10 multi drug resistant, Plasmid, the one that's so resistant to all the tested antibiotics that we put in. They so like they they so the very they so they have common replicant. That means they can replicate in a broad range of bacteria. So that means they can be in E. coli or in gram negative or, or in enterokai gram positive. Also when, well, okay, the plasmids, bacteria, when they carry resistant plasmids, they won't spend energy to, to, to save them. So that means if they, in the environment, they don't have the uh, selection pressure, they will eliminate by the time. However, when we try to study this 10 position of this 10 plasmids in E. coli, we found that even under the low concentration or Sub-inhibitory construction of, of antibiotics like uh, beta-lactam in general and tetracycline, they're there. They're there for more than 80 generations. So that means by evolution, they eliminate their coat for the bacteria to survive in the bacterial community. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so that, so that is a conclusion. And <laughs> Kind of oh yes, yeah. so the, the, the our results are so like we have we found the bacteria the resistant bacteria as well as the resistant zine A in wet water treated, treated with water, and this data should be considered when analyzing the risk posed by treated with water to environment and to human health. And I want to say thank you to all the organ, organizations that funded our work and all the partner, all the partner in our lab. And thank you for the attention.